Anyone who still owns a CRT knows how great older content like TV shows, movies, and of course, video games look on those displays. And sure, you could always just connect an old DVD player or game console for an awesome experience, but what about streaming services? And how about modern video game consoles? Well, there's a way to downscale all of that to high-end CRTs in the best possible quality, but what about just basic CRTs you might still find lying around? And since many of those TVs have antennas built in, can you just send that video wirelessly? This video will show how you do that in the easiest and cheapest ways possible. You'll want to start out by figuring out what signals your CRT can accept and match it to the available hardware. Does it have an S-Video input? If so, get yourself this 10DAC converter. While you're not going to get perfect quality from any of these converters, it does a great job and I think it's worth the higher price of about $35. How about a composite video input, that yellow jack most people have seen before? You could also use the 10DAC or save a few bucks and just get this one at only about $15. The 10 DAC one is definitely better for both signals, though. I personally wouldn't worry if you're just using composite, but both the signal quality of S-Video and the conversion quality of the 10 DAC definitely makes it worth buying if your TV has S-Video inputs. Almost all CRTs have at least an RF coax input, and if that's all you have, you'll have to spend at least 30 for a box that outputs both composite and RF. That extra cost pays for the RF modulation that's built in. This one can safely output both RF and composite simultaneously, though, if that's something important to you. For RF, just set your TV to whichever channel the switch is set to. There's some more expensive HDMI to RF adapters that are basically the same thing. The feature most useful to this project found in the more expensive ones is a more powerful RF amp, but that would only matter if you're sending video down very long runs of RF cable. Also, the more expensive RF boxes have composite video inputs, not outputs, so I personally wouldn't spend the extra $10 or so on those unless you specifically needed those features. Remember that a VCR can convert composite to RF as well, so if that's all you're looking to do, maybe use one of those instead. If you plan on watching tapes, you could save a bit of money by getting the HDMI to composite converter and just running it through your VCR to get coax RF. I have a whole other kind of silly video showing stuff you could do with the VCR and retro gaming too, which might be a fun watch. Anyway, moving on. There are some really old CRTs that only have an antenna built in, or you might want to try this wirelessly anyway, just for fun, using those old school rabbit ears antennas. If so, you'll need one of these wireless RF converters and an antenna on your TV. Basically, any old TV antenna would be fine. You can get a brand new one that accepts both analog and digital channels, meaning you could use it on your flat panels as well, or just pick up any old used analog only one. I love the nostalgic look of having the rabbit ears on my CRT, but that's up to you. Using the wireless RF transmitter is a bit more complicated. You have to hold the menu button down to enter configuration mode and use the other buttons to change the output to match your location. I used VHF, then set it to N for NTSC. I set the video frequency to 192.25 and audio to 4.5, which sent the signals to channel 10 on my TV. I have some friends that used this box that used different settings on their TV, but these are the ones that worked for me, so feel free to play around with it. Also, this box has a composite video jack, which can be set to either an input or output, but please note you could only use one output at a time, not both composite and RF on this one. There's actually a few more things to note about these wireless RF boxes, and the first thing probably applies to the wired RF converters as well. See, many late model CRTs will require you to do a channel scan before you could tune to any of the higher channels, including channel 10 like this one, so you'll need to enter the basic menu of your CRT for that. Some CRTs can do it from the front buttons, while others would require a remote. Next, if you live within a city, neither of those converters would work well for you, wired or wireless. Here's a quick example of the same exact TV, console, power supply, and wired RF coax connection back when I lived in New York City, 
versus a storage area in the suburbs. The reason there's such a big difference is because modern devices interfere with the frequencies analog TV broadcasts used to use, and if you're in a big city, you'll have thousands of devices interfering with the signal. Out here, away from a major city, this little box works fine, although it's not very powerful. If you move behind metal or outside of the room, the signal gets very weak. If you're really into this stuff, you could try to get more professional antennas and broadcast equipment for better wireless RF, but this video is sticking to cheap and easy solutions. If your CRT offers YPBPR component video or RGB inputs, you can still use any of these cheap boxes just on the lesser inputs of your TV, or you could go all out with high quality downscaling solutions. If your focus is gaming, that might be the best option, as all of the devices I showed downscale to 480i, not 240p. That's probably fine for modern games, but if you try sending one of those HDMI emulation boxes through this, it won't look right. Plus, these boxes add a bit of lag, which I'll show later. So if you'd like to see the high-end options, I strongly recommend checking out the downscaling section of RetroRGB, written by Marco Retro. His research and videos are by far the best place to get all the info you'll need for the best downscalers out there, and all CRT nerds should subscribe to him. I think what I'm showing here today is a great way to get started either way, though. Okay, so now that you know which device to get, you could just plug in your HDMI source and start watching, but as you could imagine, there's a bunch of things that you should probably know in order to have the best experience possible. All of these devices allow you to connect your streaming boxes or any HDMI device up to 1080p right to them with nothing else required. I didn't even need an HDMI splitter for compatibility, and I think the reason is quality. All of these devices lower the resolution to something that would look terrible on modern displays, so I don't think there's any need for encryption or regulation on that. Also, these devices were legitimately used for people to continue watching TV on analog TV sets when the digital switchover happened, so there was definitely a real use case for them. That said, if you run into any issues, these splitters are really great tools to have around, and I highly recommend having one in your toolbox. After connecting, the first thing you may notice is the aspect ratio. These boxes all squish the 16x9 resolution into the 4x3 aspect ratio of a CRT. That means even 4x3 content has black bars on the sides. If you're using modern streaming boxes, there's nothing you could do about this, as none seem to have aspect-related settings. Even an Apple TV box that could be set to 640x480, or other 4x3 aspect ratios, does the same thing, which is frustrating and also doesn't make any sense at all. Luckily, you could use basically any PC to accomplish this just by plugging the PC's HDMI output right into one of these devices and setting the proper resolution. Here, try this. After connecting it, right-click on your desktop and hit Display Settings. Scroll down and click on Advanced Display, then make sure the adapter is selected from the drop-down menu. Click on Display Adapter Properties, then click on List All Modes, select 640x480, and hit OK to everything. That should be it. If it doesn't work for you, try a program called QuickRes, which I'll link in the description, of course. I like using the installation free version. Just extract the file somewhere on your PC and double click on the one that matches your display. I have two total displays connected to this PC, with the converter being display number two, so I'll just launch QuickRes 2. Then I'll left click on it in the taskbar and just select the resolution I want. If you have more than two displays or if you run into any more issues, I'll link to the full version in the description. After setting the resolution, just launch your content in a web window or I guess fire up a player for any content you have saved to your PC, then drag that into the second display and hit F11 to make it full screen. If the image still looks squished, your graphics card probably can't handle that lower resolution. No problem, right click on the desktop and go to display properties again to see what it says. This old laptop lists an active signal resolution of 1280 by 720, which means that's probably about the lowest it would support. So let's just go back into list all modes and choose 1024 by 768, another 4 by 3 resolution that's higher than the minimum active signal resolution of 720 listed. Now we'll drop the 4 by 3 content in again, and it fills the screen exactly as it should. This is a really great way to watch old 4x3 shows from streaming services the way they were meant to be displayed. 
Also, if you switch to a 16x9 show, it'll be letterboxed and centered properly, exactly as it should be on CRTs. I showed this with a beat up old laptop I had lying around, but you could use basically anything. I'm not going to get into customizing a box just for this use, because that would require a video of its own, but it's worth considering if that's something important to you. Heck, there's even a fun project that turns a Raspberry Pi into an old cable box. There's so many ways to do this on all types of hardware, and the only real requirement is making sure to set the output of whatever you're using to a 4x3 resolution at either 50 or 60 Hz, depending on your region. And that's another thing to mention. These adapters seem to be able to convert PAL to NTSC and vice versa. That might be fun if you're in NTSC territory and have something like this incredible Brian Vega Algol TV, which is PAL only. This TV is capable at running at 60 Hz, but not all can do that, so if you're mixing regions, your results will probably be different. One last thing, if you're dead set on using a streaming box and not a PC or a Raspberry Pi, here's where the more complicated solutions start to make sense. You could try finding an Extron box like this, and you'd also have to use an HDMI splitter and an HDMI to VGA converter to connect your streaming box. Then you could stretch the image as you'd like, depending on what content you're watching. These particular ones only scale down to 480i though, so if you're looking for old school progressive scan gaming or a ton more options, you'll really want to explore Marco's videos. Let's move on to gaming next. Before we get into it, I want to start by warning you that these devices aren't the best choice to use with gaming consoles unless your console can output a 4x3 resolution over HDMI. Also, they only output 480i, so they won't be good for anything that would really look best with a 240p signal like retro consoles used to use. That said, if you're a PC gamer, you could use the same method I just showed for video content to play your games through these adapters, and it'll work fine. Some modern games might look right in 480i, but definitely not ones that are retro-focused. Oddly enough, the lag from these adapters isn't bad at all. If you're sending at 1080p, each one of them adds about 2 frames of lag, with the latency varying between 1 and 2 frames. Please remember that your average flat panel TV has about a frame of lag, but also remember there's no LCD motion blur with CRTs, so I imagine the lag will actually feel more like a frame or less, if you notice at all. The lag seems to stay around a frame and a half if you're sending it a 480p signal. This might also vary a bit, but just note that you're not going to find a zero lag mode. And as long as you're sending it 480p and up, you don't need to worry about any modes that jump in latency either. That said, if you try to send these boxes 480i on the input side, the latency basically doubles. There's zero reason to send these converters 480i though, I just wanted to show this for my fellow nerds, as you'd probably get a kick out of it. So overall, I'd say the latency from these devices is actually very reasonable, especially considering the price and the use case. And once again, you're going to notice a frame or so of latency much less on a CRT than you would a flat panel. So if you're buying one of these just as a cheap getting started, or if you really just want an easy way to get 480i on a CRT, I wouldn't worry about latency too much. And if you decide later you really get into this stuff, then look into the near zero latency pro solutions that are out there. So that's basically it. If you'd like to experiment with cheap ways to get content on your old CRT, just buy whichever of these cheap adapters matches your CRT's input, set any PC-like device to 640x480, and have at it. Context is really key here though, because these are devices that are all under 50 bucks that could get you started immediately and have a wide range of compatibility to them. If you get serious with this though, definitely go back and check out Marco's section of the website and all of his videos, because he goes through different devices that output a wide range of signal types, as well as resolutions, including 240p, 480i, and 480p. Now, note that some of those might be almost zero latency, but all of them are going to be much more expensive and potentially require a bunch of other devices like digital to analog converters or HDMI splitters. So for people who are very serious about this, it's absolutely worth the money. But if you're just getting into this now and you want a cheap way to get started, I couldn't possibly recommend these enough. Even if you have a PVM, just grab that S-Video 10 DAC one, get started and see how much you like it for a very, very cheap price. And speaking of money, this video isn't sponsored in any way, and I paid for all this myself. I'll post affiliate links in the description for everything I bought at no additional cost to you, 
And I hope if you buy these, you'll take the time to click through those links or just clicking on the general Amazon affiliate link on the website support page to help out. If you appreciate the research I do and want to support further, monthly support services like Floatplane and Patreon are what truly keeps this channel going, and I can't thank those supporters enough. Lastly, if you'd like to advertise to everyone around you that you're a fellow CRT nerd, pick up some retro RGB merch. There's t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, and a bunch more fun stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.